Thanks for letting me know. Can you guys hear that when it says that? Recording in progress. Okay. <laughs> I always just think it's such a funny voice. Okay. So let's start with the leadership journal. So it says, fire up your leadership with a vision. Where does a leader's vision come from? To find your vision, you must listen to the inner voice. Vision starts within. Do you know what your life's mission is? If what you're pursuing in life doesn't come from the depths of who you are and what you believe in, you will not be able to accomplish it. The unhappy voice. Where does inspiration for great ideas come from? From noticing what doesn't work? Disconnect with the status quo is a great catalyst for vision. No great leader in history has fought to prevent change. Oof, that hits home for me, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. The successful voice. Nobody can accomplish great things alone. If you want to lead others to greatness, find a good mentor and advisor who can help you sharpen your vision. We're also going to be talking about that shortly. The higher voice. Don't let your vision be confined by your own limited capabilities. A truly valuable vision must have God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, in it. Only he knows what you're really capable of. Have you looked beyond yourself, even beyond your own lifetime, as you've sought your vision? If not, you may be missing the true potential of your life. Love it. Um, I want to say thank you, thank you to everyone who hopped on that Zoom with me yesterday and or watched the replay. I really appreciate it. And um, I see some newbies on here. So hi, hello. And um, that was a really, like, raw zoom and i feel like it was the first time where i didn't censor myself in a long time just to like appease people you know and for so long i felt like i had to be a people pleaser and honestly it was detrimenting me in the long run right because i'm not and i've said this from day one but i kind of steered away from it is like i'm not here to stroke your ego i'm not here to make you feel good although i do and i hope that i do right but I'm not your babysitter and I'm not your mom. And I'm not just going to tell you the things that you want to hear. I'm here to make you successful. Your leaders, your enrollers are here to make you successful, right? So thank you again to everyone. I love that y'all shared. Um, and I hopped on a Zoom right after our call last night uh, with Rochelle and it was our Monday Level Up Leadership Zoom. And if you guys are not on those, you need to be like, they're so good. And, um, I learn a lot from them every single time that I get on and I'm three years in this business. Right. So we always have things that we could be learning. And just so you know, anyone can be, sorry, this is like hurting my back. Anyone can be on those zooms. Anyone can earn a spot there. So all you have to be doing is have your auto ship set up, which everyone should, um, and be enrolling. And you don't have to necessarily be like a mass enroller to be on. Like if you're enrolling and you are truly working your business, you'll be there. Kiana, did you have to say something? It looked like you did. Oh, no. Okay. Um, so things that I learned last night that I know a lot of us already know. Babe, would you mind giving us a in a minute? Um, but that I wanted to like really hit the nail on the head is reels. Okay, I did them consistently for a long time and they were blowing up, not like blowing up, blowing up, but like for me, blowing up. Okay, like a thousand views. I'm like, holla, you know what I mean? So it's not like they were going viral, but I was definitely attracting people to my page. And honestly, I love that just like the fun aspect of it. And like last night, we were talking about bringing the excitement back, being excited again to work our business, being excited about the things that we're doing. So, having that little outlet where you feel like you can just be silly and be who you really are, um, is just fun. And not only that, they're still popping off because of Instagram's algorithm, right? Um, PS, if you're putting hashtags in your posts or anywhere on Instagram, the new like sweet spot is like 10 to 12 hashtags. So it used to be like 30, and now it's like 10 to 12. So if you're putting more than that or less than that, there are huge chances that you may as well not even do them because the post is going to get lost. So if you're using hashtags to boost your algorithm, make sure that you stick, stick in that sweet spot. Um, that's something that I learned on the training the other day. So I just wanted to share that. Um, but do reels, y'all. And like, they don't have to be business related. Like do funny 
mom videos, do funny dog mom videos, do ones that are already going viral and just replicate them. I hate the word copy, but just replicate them, make them you, make them um, personable. So that kind of goes hand in hand with, it's so funny that Rochelle was talking about this on that Zoom because I felt like this was really what we were talking about last night is just being, sorry, I mean, it's like having a hard time, but it's just being you and being authentic to who you are and what you stand for and the beliefs that you have and how you want to run your business, right? Because at the end of the day, you are your own boss. You are a CEO for lack of better words, right? Like you own this, this is yours. Your team is yours just as much as we're a group, a team effort. Like you are the leader of your ship, right? So stay authentic to you, pretty please. And then um, something that I fell off of, not just these last couple of weeks, but probably for the last like six months is haps, mainly because I didn't have a Facebook and I'm not going to lie and say that Instagram haps pop off because in all reality, for me personally, they don't. So I was really happy to get my Facebook back and to be able to do haps again, because it is a huge, huge outlet for not only growing your network, but also growing your potentials and building genuine relationship. Okay. And who doesn't want cash or who doesn't want some fun prize, right? I always say I laugh because in the beginning, like before I started this business, if someone had reached out to me asking for me to put up a post and there was a chance of me winning $400, like you bet, can I post it 12 times? Like how many entries can I get? Right. So it's funny to me when people say no. And I think it's just because like, there's a lot of people like in businesses like ours, or even in our business that are asking for help. So it's kind of more of like a normal thing now for people to be reaching out. Um, but it's huge. It's crazy. And the amount of like, I can't forget what they call it, but like double haps, like back to back where I'm having them post about the giveaway. And then those people about products or the opportunity, like it's just huge. So if you're not on haps, do so already. Um, I'm going to just give you guys like the things that I learned and what's working for me before we kind of jump into the rest of this. But, uh, also I have a really hard time with change. Am I the only one like drop a one in the chat? If like you are so stuck in your ways, like sometimes I feel like I'm like 85 years old because I actually hate change. And I know that it's not just me. Okay. I'm glad I'm seeing ones because seriously, y'all like, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's like been statistics on like how humans get set in our ways and we like rituals and we like routine and we like things to be the same. Like that's just how our brain works. So picking up on something new for me or switching my gears, I just, I don't do it. And I always, every single time kick myself for not doing it sooner. Right. Um, so for me, that's boards. Okay. I have not touched boards. It's all over the team page. Me being the one who posted it because I saw Rochelle post it and I'm like, oh, this will probably help a lot of people. So I reshared it. Um, but I never used it because I was like, oh, I have text replacement, right? Like I have a bunch of text replacements in my phone. So why would I need boards? I've been doing this for three years. I have all the scripts. Why would I need it? Well, let me just tell you something. Yeah. Kiana says boards is actually everything. So I, for the first time, I'm not even joking you downloaded it for the first time today. Okay. And I'm just going to put this into perspective for you messages with text replacement. I'm doing the exact same thing, but with text replacement, it would probably take me on Instagram, I can send messages really fast, not so much on Facebook for me personally. I'm a little bit slower on Facebook. So on Instagram, like 60 to 100 messages would probably take me anywhere from like 20 to 30 minutes, maybe. And on Facebook, it would take me a long time, like 45 minutes to an hour to send 100 messages. And number one, who got time for that shit? Okay. Like I don't. <laughs> and I feel like that's part of the reason why I dreaded messages so much is that because I didn't want to spend an hour doing it. I don't like things that are monotonous. I don't like things that make me feel like I'm doing the same. Like, I feel like I'm, were you ever one of those kids where 
you would get a coloring book and like you'd be coloring with orange but you'd get so sick of that color that you would just like stop that spot to switch to another spot so that you could switch colors like was that just me <laughs> I'm like I have to do something different and then I'll come back to it later so for me that's how messaging felt and so I just never got it done well today again doing the exact same thing the exact same process it took me 15 messages or 15 minutes, excuse me, 15 minutes to get 80 messages out. 15 minutes. That was all it took. And all of those, except for 20, were on Facebook. So I went from an hour to 15 minutes for 80 messages. Like that is insane to me. So today, actually, I reached out to a bunch of my old distributors and I highly suggest that you guys do this too. The script is in boards and I reached out to them about how much things have changed. And one of the biggest complaints I would say probably over the last two years is people saying, cause we always say like, you work this on your time, but the reality was to send a hundred messages and do the rest. Like it was taking me anywhere from two to four hours to finish my six list, right? And so when people are saying, oh, you can finish your six list in two hours, you can do your six list in two hours. I'm like, no, you can't. Like, I don't know if I'm just like illiterate or if I'm doing something wrong, but I can't. And as time went on, I definitely got quicker. Don't get it twisted. Like I would definitely knock some messages out, but it just felt like such a task. And I hated that. Like, do y'all ever just dread sending messages? Drop a three. Like, for real, for real. So having said that, when I reached out to them, it literally in the script, let me just read it to you guys, because I feel like we just need to read it. And sorry for my disgusting husband burping in the background. He's laughing. So it says, Hey love, how are you? I'm rebuilding my team. And I got to thinking about you and I miss working with you so much. We've made so many positive changes, including new products, new compensation bonuses, new training, and more streamlined. So we're doing more and spending less time on our phones. I know you'd absolutely kill it with these new tools in place, but is this business something you'd like to do again? And I love that because it gives them the out I love it because it also talks about efficiency and how it's taking less time. And I literally today watched that happen. I finished my six list in an hour and a half. Every single thing I needed to do, follow-ups, posting, adding to my story, growing my network, getting haps up, sending my messages. Like, I don't know if I already said that, but I did all the things and it took me less than two hours. And now here we are in a training and I get to be focused because I'm not worried about the fact that I haven't sent messages all day. Right. So get on boards, like, please, 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 please. I regret not getting on it sooner. My life would have been a lot easier. I probably would not have had to have that zoom that we had last night if I had boards because it makes life so much easier. Okay. So when I sent that message, the long ass message before our zoom last night about revamping our team and about all the things that I was going through, I said, I want to completely transform our mindset. I want to transform what this team is about. We need to change things. We need to shift things up, right? Like we just need to change. Yeah. Kiana's calling me out. She's got a new word, shift and pivot. And it's so funny because she actually said that to me earlier and it's been on my heart too, like those two words. And I feel like it's just something that we really need. So um, let's talk about what my vision is. And then I want you guys, as I'm saying these, to put things in the chat that when you think of our team, you want to think of these. And I seriously want your feedback. I want you to put it in the chat. I want you to help me come up with our morale, I guess. So some of the words that came to mind for me, as always, first and foremost, is one team, one mission. And honestly, I felt like a lot of us said this in the past, but I don't know that we truly meant it. Because when things got tough, when me as your leader had to take a break, whatever, some people quit, some people left because they needed me to hold them accountable. And you guys are still on here because you held yourself accountable and you didn't let my future dictate yours, right? And that's huge. So one team, one mission, truly having each other's back, 
truly helping each other build, both build our mindset, build our personal growth, build our wallets, build friendships, and honestly have that support and feel like you can come to anyone on this team. Like if you're a newbie on this call, like there is always an open door policy with any person on this team. So meaning if you decide to leave and come back, the door will always be open. If you feel like you need to talk about something that's making you uncomfortable or something that you're struggling with or that you're upset about, we're here for that. Um, uh, having each other's back. And then I said, it's time to step into leadership roles. And when I wrote this, one thing popped into mind. So I want you to drop a four and I'll read your guys' stuff that you put in the chat in a second, but I want you to drop a four. If you have ever feared the responsibility of being a leader in this business, I want you to drop a four. Okay. Uh, movement, growth, friendship. I love that. Thank you, Mackenzie, for putting in. Um, four, four. Yes, I still do. Okay, so this is something that I always, always hear from people. And I had the same fear, but I don't know if it's just my personality, but it didn't really scare me. It was more just like, I don't know how to do it, right? Like, I don't know how to be a leader. And so that's what freaked me out. But I think people see me running a team page and having these Zooms and doing things like the uh, top and roller boards and like all of the back behind the scenes stuff that not a lot of people see. And I have always said, and will continue to say that leadership is hands down the hardest thing about this business because it forces you out of your comfort zone. It forces you to grow. It forces you to be a leader, not a manager. It forces you to do everything that scares you. And so I think that's why we fear it. But I was like, okay, you know what? This is something that keeps coming up. So we really need to break this down. So I literally went on to Google and said, why do people fear responsibility of leadership? And I just want to read you what came up because I feel like it's everything that we needed to hear. And if you've ever felt this way, this is for you. So what causes fear of responsibility? A person who avoids taking responsibility doesn't have enough proof that they can take responsibility. Let's break this down even more. Like that for me, when I read that, I interpret that like you don't feel like you have the self-worth or you don't have anything to show for the fact that you are responsible enough to be a leader. So let me read that again. A person who avoids taking responsibility doesn't have enough proof that they can take responsibility. And something that I want you guys to know, especially people who are pushing for promotions, which I hope to God all of you are, but your rank does not define you. There are people at Ruby that are making diamond plus paychecks. It's not about the status quo, just like we read, right? It's not about the status quo. It's about who you are becoming, who you're leading and how you're doing it. So don't let the rank freak you out or, oh, I haven't made enough money yet. Or I just started this business and a distributor wants to enroll. Like you don't have proof for that responsibility. You join this business and part of being in this business and being a leader here is being a leader. That's part of it. That's going to be part of this business and it forever and always will be, right? So that's proof in and of itself. You clicked join. You now have proof that you're responsible to be a leader. Learn how to do it, right? They lack the belief that they can take responsibility or believe that taking responsibility leads to negative outcomes. Have you ever felt that way? Yeah. And then it breaks it down even further. One, take responsibility for your thoughts, feelings, words, and actions. Two, stop blaming. Three, stop complaining. Four, refuse to take anything personal. How huge is that one? Nothing, even if people are coming at you, whether it be a hat or a product tester script or a distributor or a leader coming at you for something, it's a them problem, not a you problem, 99.99999% of the time what how many nines I put he's laughing at me because he goes nine 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 um make yourself happy how many times have you felt like you couldn't be a good leader because you're in a shitty mood right well we have to make ourselves happy 
we have to love ourselves before anyone else can do that for us. That's on us. So to be a good leader, we have to be in a good headspace. So if you get a nasty message, stepping away for 20, 30 minutes, taking a walk, taking a bath, I don't know what you do to de-stress, go work out, whatever it is, take a minute. And we, everyone on this call right now, I'm looking through is in generally the same generation. We are a microwave society. We want things to happen right now. And I don't know about you, but even when I was working my nine to five, if I got a nasty email from a tenant, you bet your ass I was replying right then and there because I was so irate that someone had the audacity to come at me. Right. But does that solve anything? No. Six, live in the present moment. Seven, use the power of intention. How powerful is that word alone? Intention. You are setting something in your mind that you are going to do. Eight, feel calm and confident. How often, especially when we get negative messages from whoever it be, even family, right? We get so worked up and I am so guilty of this, especially with my mother. I get so worked up and so irritated. And I just have all these things running through my head that I talk a million miles a minute. I say things I don't mean, AKA, I don't think before I speak and my confidence both within myself and how it's perceived goes out the door. Because even if your points are valid, if your tone is that way, where people know that you're anxious or people know that you're frustrated, you come across as insecure. That's just psychology. So when you come across calm and collected because you took a second to actually think about what you were going to say or to get on that call with somebody, you come across like you know what you're talking about. And I don't know if you guys have read the book, baby, what's that book? Um, the 48 Laws of Power. Um, that's actually talked about in there. So if you haven't read that book yet, you need to. It's a very like oof read because I can only read like three pages literally at a time because it is so much freaking information. But it talks about how to manipulate. And there's such, that's such a taboo word. Like when you think of manipulation, put it in the chat. When you think of manipulation, what do you think of? I think of shitty ex-boyfriends. Wow, I was going to say that. Yep. I think of people who are in my family that manipulate me to think a certain way that isn't true about someone else. Or yeah, exactly. Lies, negativity, right? The word manipulate doesn't actually have a negative connotation by definition. That is an us thing because of past experience. We are putting that word into a bad boat when in reality, it's very neutral and you can manipulate the word manipulate to whatever suits your narrative. So if you want to manipulate someone to buy the product, that doesn't mean you're being sneaky. That doesn't mean you're lying. That doesn't mean that you're telling something that isn't going to be true as far as results or the opportunity or whatever, but you're fitting it into their narrative. If it's a mom and you're talking to them about the opportunity, I can guarantee you that that conversation with them about the opportunity is going to go a lot different than it would a college student who just wants to make enough money to get drunk that weekend. Can I get a hallelujah? Okay. So when you think about words like that, I really want you to be confident in the words that you're saying and understand that it's okay to persuade. It's okay to manipulate. That's not a bad thing. And once you read this book, seriously, your entire life will change over those two words alone, persuasion and manipulation. Power is another one. When I used to think of power, I used to think of selfish. I used to think of money. I used to think of fill in the blank, right? So um, I thought that was very interesting because uh, I feel like that's something that people often say to me. So just to recap, we talked about what fear is of fear of responsibility is. And then I gave you eight tools to get over your fear of responsibility, which is take responsibility for your thoughts, feelings, words, and actions. Stop blaming, stop complaining, refuse to take anything personal, make yourself happy, live in the present moment, 
use the power of intention and feel calm and confident. That is how you get over that fear of either responsibility and or responsibility as a leader and as a business owner, as a mom, as a wife, as a friend, sister, whatever it is. Okay, moving on. Uh, Another question that I get from a lot of people, especially new distributors, is how do I stay focused and how do I stay motivated? Okay. And Mel Robbins, we've talked about this 5 million times, and I don't care if you've watched it a hundred, go watch it again, has an amazing YouTube video on why motivation is bullshit. Okay. Motivation doesn't exist. It's not a real thing. It's something that we made up in our own heads. Literally, I went live earlier on my Facebook page and I said it in that uh, long chat that I sent the other day. I don't ever feel like doing anything. Seriously, if I could lay in bed all day and have someone feed, bathe, take care of me, pay all my bills and take me shopping when I wanted to go, that would be my dream life. But guess what? That's not reality. I'm not getting fed grapes and a freaking Corona on the beach in Malibu right now. Okay. So until it's my reality, I have to do things that I don't want to do. So when it comes to motivation, you need to start replacing that word with self-discipline. So take motivation out of your vocabulary. Don't have ever, (laughs) Destiny says you're slacking, Connor, for not feeding me grapes on the beach in Malibu. (laughs) He goes, what? (laughs) He goes, get the fuck out of here. Huh? Oh my God. So um, take that out of your vocabulary and start replacing it with the word self-discipline, but how do I stay focused? Okay. This is something that I struggle with every day. If I'm being honest, like, can we just be real? I am never focused. I have ADD. Like, I don't know. I cannot freaking keep my mind straight. My mind runs a million miles an hour. Connor likes to call my brain a bowl of spaghetti. His is nice, neat and organized bookshelf. Mine is literal. Yeah. He goes, I take one book down at a time. No, no, that doesn't exist for me. There's a bowl of spaghetti and I'm climbing through trying to find the one thing that I have to do. And by the time I get there, I forgot what I was searching for. Right. Like, is that just me? Okay. So how do I stay focused? This is a really loose term. And honestly, you're going to have to find what works for you because what works for me to stay focused might not work for you, but I'm going to give you two tools that I used and use now that really helped me stay focused. Number one is a focus tracker. Okay. It's literally an app called focus tracker. And if you have anxiety at first, it's going to be like, Oh no, I can't do this. It's going to freak me out. It's going to give me anxiety. It's going to like shoot my blood pressure through the roof, but hear me out and try it a couple of times when you're sending messages and let me know how you feel. So literally what it is, is it's a pendulum app where it literally just ticks. It goes, and you set a timer for how long you want. So 20 minutes, I would put it at, and I would go to start sending my messages and it ticks. And it's almost like it creates like a sensory disturbance where you can only hear the ticking and focus on what you're doing. And you're not listening to the outside noise because mom life, I have kids screaming everywhere. My dog's barking at someone. There's someone knocking on the door. Connor's asking me for something. I don't know. Okay. So when I can only listen to that, I don't know about you guys, but I have very selective hearing and I can tune everything out if I have something else to listen to. And then it beeps when it's done and you know that your timer's done. So if you only have 10 minutes to work your business, work for 10 minutes and turn your damn focus timer on and get to work. Right. But it will keep you focused. So that's number one. And then number two is the app that I shared in the moneymakers chat yesterday. It's called mind list mind list. And it's a white app with like little lines on it. looks like a little journal And I love it because I'm a person who likes to physically see things crossed off when I mark them off. I don't want them to just disappear. I don't want them to be like, oh, you did that. No, I want to see that I did that. That motivates me. If I'm like, okay, I had all these things on my list today and all of these things are already crossed off, that motivates me. So I put in everything. I I mean, I break it down to like the nitty gritty, like showering and getting ready because Lord knows I wouldn't do it if it wasn't on my freaking to-do list. Working out, eating, drinking water, 
posting like my six list, right? Putting laundry away, whatever, whatever, anything and everything that I need to do that day goes on that list. It's all in one place. It keeps it organized. And honestly, I try to journal for on and off multiple times for three years. And I just cannot freaking wrap my head around bringing a journal with me wherever I go. If that works for you, I applaud you. I'm sorry. I can't do it. Okay. So with this, I'm able to have it on my phone, take it wherever I go and be done. So that's why I stay focused, focused and motivated. The other thing is you guys that I think we forget so often is objects in motion stay in motion. So when you are laying in your bed all day, chances are you're not going to feel as good and you're not going to want to work as if you had gone out and walked, gone outside or cleaned your house, like momentum builds momentum, right? So if I go work out, I will get shit done. Like that's just how I am. So start moving your body. Um, another thing is self-development. Like for real y'all, I got off that train for a while and I miss it. Okay. Because when you fill your head with good, you get good. When you fill your head with bad or nothing at all, you don't get anything or you get bad. Right. So fill your mind with good things and give yourself lots of grace. Okay. Don't put so much pressure on yourself where you feel like you need to be working 24 seven. I'm telling you right now that I got my six list done in two hours today in two separate sittings. So one hour here, one hour there, anyone can do that. Anyone. And you're either just making excuses not to, or you're not making it a priority point blank period. So if you don't have the motivation, get up, move your body, self-development, give yourself grace. Um, also plugging into zooms and going back to that self-discipline, like staying close to the fire. And no matter how much you don't want to get on a zoom, do it anyways, because I promise you when it's done, you will feel so much better. And I guarantee you, whatever you have left on your six list that you haven't finished let yet, you will go finish it because you're like, oh my gosh, everyone is on this zoom. We just talked about all of this. You'll feel guilty if you don't, when you're done, because you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even do what I was supposed to. And all I did today was hop on a zoom. Well, that's not income producing as much as it's important. Right. So plugging into zooms. Um, honestly, I wrote down, I'm scared of what will happen if I don't stay motivated. If I don't say stay self-disciplined while wow, I can't talk. Honestly, y'all like shit has hit the fan. Like I told you guys everything that I've been going through last night for the last two months, but literally today our brand new Tahoe either got broken into, or I don't even know what happened, but my whole driver's side window is completely shattered. I thought for a second that it would be hail because of the way that it was broken, but no one else, my car was literally parked. My Kia was parked right next to our Tahoe. And it wasn't damaged. So the only thing that I can think is that someone tried to break into it and couldn't, or I don't know, but like everything keeps hitting the fan. We paid $1,100 to have our zippy shell with all of our shit delivered. Didn't get here. Oh, because a forklift broke. Oh, awesome. The one forklift that you have that was supposed to deliver my load, of course, would break today. Right? So honestly, I feel like I've been hit with everything I possibly can and I'm done. So I know that from here on out, it can only get better. So if you feel like you're at rock bottom right now with me, girl, same, let's hug it out and just recognize that like things are good, things are coming. And I've been here in a very different situation as far as like being down in the dumps multiple times. And I've also been at some of my highest highs before, right? And I know that they're going to come again because they always have. So there's no reason to stress out about the fact that life keeps getting shittier because guess what? It's going to get really good and then it's going to get shitty again because that's just how life works. And just like this business, life is a roller coaster and you have to just roll with the punches. So let's put our big girl panties on and just roll with it, right? We're all going to hop in a boat. And we're going to ride this shit. Um, oh, the only other thing that I wrote down too was that we can't go to the places that we want to go in this business without each other. And that just goes back to one team, one mission, but you are not in this alone. And for so long, even when I was promoting to diamond, I was like, you know what? I don't give a shit. Who's not working. I'm going to come up with the volume. I don't know how, I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to make it do it. 
I'm going to make myself do it. And I don't know what shift happened, but I felt like I had to do it all on my own. And the reality is, is that I don't. And if no one's working, there are people who are willing to, I mean, hello, look at all of you guys on this zoom. Clearly I can find people who want to work. So if you don't have people working, go find more, but it's not all on you. So break down with your teams, how much everyone needs to bring in to get it done. And if one person's really good at enrolling customers, but they're not so good at enrolling distributors and you are, place distributors under them. If you are really good at enrolling customers and someone's really good at enrolling distributors, get them help for finishing their shopping spree because yes, it might not help you right this second, but it is going to help you in the long run. So we have to work together. We have to work together as a team. We have to know that Yes, it's your business, your business, your business, your business, your team, your team, your downline, but we're all on the same team and your paycheck affects my paycheck and my paycheck affects your paycheck, right? So we don't have to do it by ourselves. We don't need to do it by ourselves. And honestly, having that mentality makes it so much harder on us. Another reminder is consistency is key. I just wanted to remind you guys of the numbers that Connor and I broke down yesterday if 22 messages a day, and obviously that's going to fluctuate, let's just say 40, even if it was, that would be one and a half percent of people responding back to you, 40 messages a day, you'll be triple diamond in 90 days if you do it every fucking day. And so does your team. Okay. So I sent a hundred today. Imagine if every single one of us sent a hundred messages, which by the way, took me 20 minutes because of boards, 20 minutes every day sending a hundred messages. Imagine what would happen if we did that every single day for 90 days. And maybe instead of a new push, because I feel like those are totally dead and we don't care about them anymore. What if we did something where it was like just a post of, I did my hundred messages today. And when you're done, you hold yourself accountable by going and posting, um, on the messages. What messages did you send? I might've missed this. Uh, I've been really focusing on hat messages because I feel like that's what's bringing me the most people and I'm able to kind of lead into a distributor or potential conversation and I'll send, um, yes. And on Instagram, I was sending, I'll send you what I was sending. So you guys can save these to your notes or you can look on boards. So the first one that I sent was hat scripts. And then I sent this message. And then when they said, yes, I said, I sent 80 on Facebook and 20 on Instagram. So I sent that message on Facebook. I'll send you the, the ones that, um, I did on Instagram in a second. Okay. So then I did this and then I did something like this. Okay. So that was what I did for HAPS. And then once they posted it, this is what I was sending. So I'm immediately turning it into a PLC conversation. And then on Instagram, what I sent today was this one. And all 80 messages were, yes, that first initial message of, hey, I wanted to say thank you for following me on here. Or if um, I knew them and I felt like that message was kind of awkward because I was like, thanks for following on me on here. Like we know each other. So I would just, I changed that tiny little piece to thank you for always, um, or thank you for your continued support. It means a lot. And then I kept the rest of the message the same. Um, so that's what I sent. And honestly, I just want us to do something where like, what was your attention with the letter hap? If you don't mind me asking, do you mean like how many people I got comments or, okay. Uh, some none. And it's been the whole day. Is that what you mean? Unmute yourself. No, how many people did you get to actually put that post up for you? Today, I haven't checked my messages since I've finished all 100, but after I sent the first 60 on Facebook, I got five haps up. So that's like 10%. So that's what I'm saying. If we, if, if these numbers that Connor and I broke down of one and a half percent replying, 
I got 10% today. I know that's the 20 messages, but I was telling them to send 40. So that's right. Anyways, never mind. <laughs> we based it off of 3% of people replying. Um, I was only, letter hop works so good for me these days when I only have time to send 30 a day, but I shoot for 80 to 100 a day. I was only asking because the letter hop doesn't seem to be working for me. Like people aren't commenting or people aren't posting it. Posting. Try this one. Hang on, let me see if I can find it. If not, I'll send it in the, cause I don't wanna spend too much time. Yeah, sorry, I'm asking a million questions, but are you suggesting that I just switch the half up completely and use a different word on boards? Like instead of having it just be typed letters, like a picture, is that what you're asking? Or the ones with the A, B, C, and D? So instead of using that same, that like, the half that you just sent instead of using that one should I switch it up completely and use like an entire different half or should I keep trying this one and hope that it's going to work for me uh I wouldn't stick with something that's not working for you but here's a couple other ones that I've been using that have been working um every single one of these that I got up today I got comments on the letter half I didn't um I hope that helps Okay, if you have more questions, yeah, put them in the chat. But yeah, I, I, I've been kind of playing around with it because honestly, I wasn't doing haps for a while. And obviously, I haven't been working the last two weeks. So I'm kind of just replaying with everything and allow my, allowing myself to like juggle and find what works for me again. Um, that's the other thing, you guys. Don't get so stuck in your ways that you're not going back to change. Um, seriously, ask whatever questions. I got all night. Put them in the chat and I'll answer them at the end. So write them down as you think about it. Um, what was I saying? Someone remind me. Does anybody remember? Change. Oh, don't get so stuck in your ways that you're like, this is what I'm sending. This is what I'm doing. Like if something's not working for you, now hear me out, give it ample time. I, my timeline usually is like two weeks. If after two weeks, a message or a post isn't working for me, I'm not gonna do that anymore because it's not working. But these are in boards for a specific reason. And we've always said that you don't need to fix something that ain't broke, right? This business ain't broke and you have all the tools to make it work for you. So just use them and find what works for you. Um, also make sure that you're switching up the haps, make sure you switch the names and you don't call them the wrong name on accident. Make sure you insert your name and don't just leave it. Insert your name here, put your name in it when you send it to them. Make sure that you're changing emojis and all that kind of stuff because the same rules apply where Facebook, if they see something multiple, multiple, multiple times, they're going to block it. It's going to get lost in the mix, right? So just change it up, make it sound like you add different letters, do emojis and all that kind of stuff. If you have like a, like the font keyboard, those aren't like detectable the same way that regular text is. So you can switch certain words out like bold or italicized, and that will give it like a different code instead of just like copying and pasting whatever it is you're posting. Does that, does that make sense? Okay, so that will help a lot. So if you're like struggling to change them up, um, that's something that I would suggest doing too. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything in the chat and then we'll go. You can copy them onto your own boards and make your own. Yes, absolutely. Okay, the other thing is I want you to write down, I'm gonna give you a second to think about it. I want you to write down what I'm calling my flaws. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by this. My flaws are when it relates to this business, frankly, I'm really fucking lazy. If you ask my husband, I don't like to do things like ask him, ask Nat, ask any of my best friends, literally my motto, my go-to phrase is I'll do it later. Like my husband always gives me shit because I'm like, Oh, I'll do it later. Like, Oh, I don't feel like doing that right now. I'll just do it later. Like, it's fine. I'm going to do it. 
but I'm going to do it later. Okay. And he's like, I've heard that five times already today. Will you just do it? It's going to take you two seconds. Right. But again, I'm lazy. I don't like doing shit. Exactly. Laundry. You should see my floor right now because my kid made a mess earlier and I just, I'm not, I'm, I just, I give up. Like I give up. I can't do it. So do it later. Okay. That's me. I E. Uh, I like to sleep in. Okay. And my kids are finally at an age where I'm like, cry in your crib. Here's your bottle. I'm sleeping for another hour. Shut up with so much love. It's not even funny, but for real, be quiet because I'm trying to sleep and give my kid her tablet and make her be quiet. I love to sleep in. I also love staying up late to watch TV. My wind down time is scrolling on TikTok for three hours or watching a stupid show on Netflix. That's my MO. So I want you to write down seriously in the chat. I want you to share them. Um, what are your flaws in relation to like what I was just saying? Let me grab me one too, babe. What are things that you think are holding you back? Because a long time, actually until about mm, yesterday, I thought that all of these things were holding me back. And I'm gonna explain to you in a second why they're not but I want you to write them down. Okay. I saw inconsistent. What else y'all? Yeah, honestly, I didn't get on the wake up with me half the time because same girl. So no stress. So for a long time, I was seeing top leaders post about the book, the 5am club, which I read and did for two months consistently. I was up at 5am. And guess what? I got so burnt out. It's not even funny. I'm so proud of the people that can get their asses up before the sun is up, but it ain't me. Okay. I can't do it. I cannot. I'll do it for one day. And then I'm so exhausted by the end of the day that I sleep in the next day and I've immediately broken that cycle. So I just, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. Right. <laughs> Who wants to wake up at the ass crack of dawn unless you have a newborn. <laughs> okay. So I felt like, again, and we talked about this last night, I felt like I had to fit a certain mold. I felt like because this business wasn't broken and people were giving me the tools that I needed to follow suit. Yes, that is true when it comes to messaging and it comes to your six list. That is absolutely true. You don't need to make one up. It's already there for you. But when it comes to your schedule and when you do things and when you wake up and when you go to sleep and when your open and closed hours are for your business, is up to you. Mine are literally the same, super lazy, like to watch TV, get stuck in the scroll hole, inconsistent. I hold myself back from posts or stories because of what people might or could think. I hate mornings. I honestly get sick thanks to anxiety. If I get up too early, I get lost in the scroll too. I don't want to wake up. If I don't do it in the morning, I don't do it because I just don't want to. Okay, exactly. Straight up, I'm lazy. I make lists and then don't do a damn thing on them. Fun times, same girl. Okay, so first of all, it goes back to self-discipline, right? We sometimes have to hold ourselves accountable, but these things are not holding you back. It is like you are trying to swim up river. You need to go with the flow instead. So I've recognized my, these things about myself and instead of trying to change them, I'm keeping them. Because you know what? Sleeping in and staying up till 3 a.m. and watching TV and scrolling on TikTok genuinely makes me happy. It makes me feel like a normal human. It's the things that I missed. And that's why I took a break for the last two weeks, like I did. Because I literally had this conversation with Connor. I was like, I miss being a normal person. Can I get a hallelujah? I miss just getting on social media without an ulterior motive. I missed that. I missed hanging out with people and not feeling like I needed to respond to a message really quick before we started dinner. Right? Exactly. Yes. Me too. At times you don't have to do that. And honestly, this two week break showed me that, that there are so many times throughout my day where I could be working, but I don't want to. And that's okay. Right? Sometimes you have to work even when you don't want to, because that's just reality, but there's a balance. And I hate that word and I use it so lightly, but hear me out when I say 
don't take those things away from yourself because you're swimming upstream. You're fighting fire with fire and it's never going to go away. And that's what causes the burnout. And that's what makes you miss those things. But you are the only one trying to take those things away from you. And these last two weeks were a huge wake up call for me in that I get to sleep in. I get to stay up late. I get to do whatever I want to do because I control my own schedule. Right? So don't take them away. Work around them. It's a roadblock and you got to go around it. So if you like to sleep in, let yourself sleep in. If you like to wake up early, good for you. If you like to watch TV, watch your freaking Netflix show. Binge watch it. Watch it all night. I don't give a shit. But get your shit done. You still got to do the thing. Yes, we do not have to be the same as top leaders in this business. Yes. So stop taking those things away from yourself. We don't have to, but work around them. And I'm the same way, Brie, where if I don't do it in the morning, I'm simply not going to get it done. So when my babysitter was here earlier and I had her for an extra hour, I busted it out. And when I was at the gym, I busted the other half out. And here I am about to get off of this Zoom and I get to watch TV till 3 a.m. and sleep in because that's what I want to do and because I'm still going to get my six list done and I've already got all my stuff done for the day. And so now I don't feel guilty about it and you shouldn't either. So I just really wanted to give you guys that perspective because honestly, I felt like the last two weeks, that's what has really like hit home for me. We don't have to be the same as top leaders in this business. Do what works for you. For the longest time, I've been trying to find the perfect routine when routines don't exist anymore for me because mom life. Yes. You are radiating fire energy. Ah, thanks, boo. That's you. But for real, honestly, I was like, how am I going to make this work for me? Well, I need to let myself live. Like, have any of you guys just got so lost in the business that you forgot to like take a breath of fresh air? Like, relax. We're at a 12. We need to bring it down to a seven. It's not that hard. Two hours is all it takes. Download boards, pre write your posts save reels in your drafts. Take one day to do it. I guarantee you your six list will be done in under an hour if you do those things. Promise. And if it doesn't, come to me and I'll tell you why it's not. Um, okay. I want you to drop your goal by the end of the year. I want this team. Yes. Allowing us to live is literally what this business is about. I love that. I want you to drop your goal and maybe mine's too small because I'm going to see some years and be like, damn, I should have fought harder, but I've been pushing for triple diamond for almost two years. And I want us to be there so bad at the end of this year. It's not even funny, like for real, for real. That means, and again, I want to put stuff into perspective for you, two diamonds, one double, three emeralds, eight rubies, and multiple people hitting the 500s club. So who is going to be in those spots by the end of the year? Remember 22 messages a day for 90 days hits triple. Okay. So even if we were taking the real, 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 real slow route, we have how many months left in the year? Okay. We have six months left in the year. So even if you did half the work, bare minimum, every single one of you, including myself could be triple diamond by the end of this year but we just have to do it every day, one hour, maybe two, if you're not pre-writing your posts and pre-recording stuff. So call it two hours, one in the morning, one at lunch, you're done before bed. And you can go to bed and watch your show and wake up late and spend time with your kids and have dinner without having your freaking phone by you. Um, so the other, the one last thing that I want to leave you guys with, and then I promise I'll let you go is, um, setting open and close hours. So that for me, and I want you to do this too, because it's very important to create boundaries, mainly for yourself. Okay. Because when you tell yourself that you don't have any working hours, you're going to find yourself up at 1am when you're supposed to be watching your show, because that's what makes you happy answering messages. And if you're pushing for promotion and you want to go ham, like totally respond to them. Okay. I'm not telling you not to grind. Okay. Because if you want to more power to you, 
I just personally create burnout within myself really quickly, really easily. It's also just part of being a Gemini. I get bored quick. So shit. What was I just saying? Oh, working hours. Thank you. Is, um, Set your working hours because it creates the boundaries within yourself and it also creates the boundaries within your team. So for me, from now on, 10 p.m. is my closing sign and 10 a.m. is my open sign. That doesn't mean you can't message me. You can always, 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 always call, text, FaceTime me any time of the day. If I don't answer, please don't be offended. It's not my open time and it's time to spend time with family and it's time for me to take a shower and it's time for me to eat, sheet, eat, eat, sheet, breathe, repeat. You know what I mean? Okay. So 10 to 10 is my block out time. So all of you guys know that now I want to know in the chats, because I really want to push you to do this with me. What are your new working hours or what is your open and close time? When do you open up shop? And when do you close it down? I want you to think about your schedules. Think about your life. Think about when you're able to get your six list in because my times aren't going to work for everybody. I'll think about my hours tonight. Yes. Good. You don't have to give me an answer right now, but I really, 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 if you can, eight to eight. I love that. 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., Brie. The other way around. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. is when you're open. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Love it. And honestly, as you're enrolling new distributors, like this is something that is so new for me. The other thing, sorry, I know I promised I would let you guys go. The other thing that I stopped doing that you guys might have may or may not noticed is I don't introduce myself to everybody anymore. And that's not me being rude. That's not me not wanting to be their leader too. That's not me like anything. Don't like put certain thoughts in your head about why I'm doing this because I'm going to tell you why I'm not. I learned after a conversation with a couple different top leaders that this creates me as an outlet for everyone. And if you do this with your team, you are creating yourself as an outlet for everyone. The beauty of this business is that your enroller is your leader. I don't want and I physically, especially as this team grows, I can't help hundreds of people in one day. I simply just can't. And even with the size of our team right now, it, it's so overwhelming because if I give every single person my number and I reach out to them and they feel like they can come to me, 90% of the time, number one, they're going to go over their enroller's head. How many times have you been annoyed because your distributor didn't ask you a question and they messaged me or Rochelle? I'm sorry, but that's annoying. If I enrolled you, come to me. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find out for you. Okay. Um, it allows you to take a breath and worry about the people that you are enrolling, how we connect and build that one team, one mission and how they know that I'm their leader without me texting them my personal number. They can message me on Facebook. I may not get back to them for a while, but they can message me on Facebook. I'm not saying they can't reach out to me. That's not what I'm saying at all. And it's not that they can't reach out to you. It's that I'm not giving my personal number away and I'm not introducing myself right off the bat anymore. If they're killing it, I message them telling them that they're killing it. Hey, I see you, right? And I'm hoping that they hop on these Zooms because then they get to see my face. I get to see their face. They know I'm there for them. They're here for the training. That's all great. If they have questions after the training, they go to their leader. It creates duplication. It creates layered leadership. So on top of creating working hours, if you were doing what I was doing by reaching out to every single person on your downline, I promise you, you will overwhelm yourself. So let me check the chats really quick. Does anyone have any questions about anything that I've talked about? It's overwhelming and I would get distracted from my biz completely. Yes. Pam Souter has a really good pod podcast on setting hours for your business. Yes, 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 yes. Love it. Okay, guys, I'm gonna let you go. I will upload this recording here in a little bit and I love you. Thank you for hopping on.